Welcome into Giants Post Game Live presented by NFL All Day. I'm Madeline Burke here with Super Bowl champion Sean O'Hara, Super Bowl champion Amani Toomer. And guys, despite the crazy scramble of a finish to this game, the Giants come away with a win 20 to 12 over the visiting Chicago Bears on a legacy day. We saw three different people in at quarterback, including Saquon Barkley. We saw quite a bit of fireworks out there. The run game got going, but Sean, what stood out to you today? Yeah, Matt, a thrilling game to the end. Uh, even the final play took forever, but you mentioned it, the legacy aspect. I think Giants took the legacy uh, aspect of this game to a whole other level with Saquon <laughs> playing quarterback. They basically went to like a wing T offense. Uh, I can't say enough ab about Daniel Jones. And, you know, for a lot of people who's, the conversation about Daniel Jones was, is he a liability, can he take care of the football? Tonight, or today, Daniel Jones was a weapon, and they used him, not his arm, but his legs. He scored two touchdowns on, on called plays for him to run the football, and I thought that was the, the, the biggest part of this game. They didn't kick field goals down there. Getting those touchdowns ended up helping them come out. Well, and he also victory. threw a mean blocker as well. To get he, he, he threw a nice block. <laughs> he, he, a nice he got block. his way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, what I was impressed about mostly was the, the scheme, right? what Kafka came up with, the offense coordinator. The fact that we one thing that we did have was we had Saquon Barkley run the ball well. We had Daniel Jones run the ball, making good decisions, you know, with the run pass option. The fact that they played to their strengths and they did not make a lot of mistakes. There wasn't it wasn't a penalty real, real game. It just is this is a tough team to beat because they're not going to beat themselves and they're going to put themselves in positions to win. The scheme was great. You, you look at who we who was out there. I think that this offense and this team is one receiver away from being very dangerous in the whole in the whole scheme of this NFL because of the fact that it's such a, a tough team to beat so I think we need to figure out a way to manufacture one of those guys in that receiving room to step up and really make this a real a dual threat offense with the run and the pass catch the balls that are there to catch right yeah not there let the a couple of, oh yeah there not let a couple the, of drops right there not let the safety just run in front of them and take the ball away from them yeah you know yeah the Giants are a physical team right now and they, and they showed it against the yeah. Bears who had the second best rushing offense yeah. in, the, in the league coming into this game and uh, you can't say enough about this defense and what they did to stop that running game absolutely but the offensive side of the ball also had their work cut out for him let's send it down to Paul Dettino who's got Andrew Thomas and Matt Breida on the field Andrew, another very tough game, but this time you guys come out on the W side. It's got to feel very good. No, it feels great. Um, you know, after the last game, we wanted to come out and start fast, score points in the first half. We did that, ran the ball pretty well. Um, we faced some adversity, but we kept we kept chopping. What is it like in the huddle? Daniel goes out with an ankle injury. Tyrod Taylor comes in. Then he goes out when they examine his head, and now you're running Wildcat. It's unbelievable. Honestly, we didn't flinch. Like, we knew what, what was on the line. Um, DJ and, and Tyrod, they fought hard for us. And we came in, Saquon, Brita, uh, ran the ball, did what we had to do. Have you guys ever practiced any of that Wildcat stuff at all over the summer? We've had some some plays in, um, we just never called them. So we were, we were a little prepared. Obviously, you don't expect that coming in, uh, but we did a good job adjusting. How uncomfortable a feeling was it to actually run them in a real game? Now, it's, it's not great when, you, when they know it's a run, you know what I'm saying? Like, usually it's a, a switch up or change up, but we don't have, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any quarterbacks in the game. Um, it's a little harder, but, but we did a good job. And by the way, you shut down Robert Quinn today. That's a hell of a job by a very premier pass rusher. Now, he's a great uh, uh, pass rusher. He's just trying to, you know, better my craft every day, and I think I did a good job today. Andrew, thanks for your time. No problem. So, Gary, you recover that fumble there, the muff by Velas Jones with about two minutes to go. Obviously a very key play, even though you missed the last field goal here. What did you see on the play? I mean, I seen, I seen we had I know he was backed up. You know, we had to, we had to get down and cover. So uh, he kicked it. And I seen it was nobody but me and the Gunners. When he when he went up for the ball, and I seen him drop it, I just started running faster. I knew I had to recover it so the game could be over or close to. And I, I just went down, got it, celebrated with my team. At times, special teams has been a little up and down, a little spotty. But to make a huge play like that has to feel very good for this unit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say we was up and down. I still feel like we're the best in the league. But uh, that's a huge play for our team, especially for our special teams. Great play. What does it mean for the resiliency of this club to come back after the Monday night loss to the Cowboys and bounce back here to go three and one? I mean, we not. I mean, we lost. We, we put that past us. I mean, this win means a lot to us. We're now in three and one. We're going to keep balling, keep fighting hard until we get to where we're trying to get to. Gary Brightwell, thanks for your time. Thank you. That sound from Andrew Thomas and Gary Brightwell brought to you by Ford. Gary Brightwell, of course, having that huge fumble recovery in the 
fourth quarter to all but solidify the win. But as Andrew Thomas mentioned, this team started strong today. That's been a point of emphasis. Not one, but two touchdowns in the first half, both on Daniel Jones' runs. Getting that start early, that's that's important for this team. Yeah, no doubt. The, the touchdown early on, the first touchdown that they've scored in the first half all season long was huge. And Andrew Thomas mentioned they didn't flinch. They didn't flinch when Mark Lewinsky went out of the game. Ben Bredesen came in at guard. They didn't flinch when Evan Neal left the game with a neck injury and Devery Henderson had to fill in. So I think for this offense, they enjoy running the football. And when you rush for 262 yards soon, mm -hmm. I, I, you take a lot of pride in that, yeah. and, and I, it, you feel good when you come into the locker room and you know, like, we basically just played bully ball, and there's nothing they could do to stop it. Yeah, when you're an offensive line, when you're a receiver like sure. me, you're like, hey, come on, <laughs> we got to put this hey, thing in the air a little bit. Hey, you don't have to take yeah. the showers. These yeah. are first. Yeah. But you know what? I wanted to really commend Mike Kafka on the fact that not only both quarterbacks go out, but they didn't flinch. Just like, just like he said, they didn't flinch. They had a plan. And it, it, that's what coaching is. When you're when you prepare for the unforeseen, just like that, and that's co good, great coaching playing itself out in real time. Great coaching translating to a three-one record Absolutely. in week four. We love to see it. We've got a lot more coming up on the show. Speaking of great coaching, we'll hear from Dable. But first, guests of our post-game show received a gift certificate to Ben and Jacks, located on 44th Street in Manhattan. From the celebrated porterhouse to finer seafood, Ben & Jack's will surpass your expectations of what a steakhouse should be. After the break, we're going to hear from head coach Brian Dable. That and much more coming up on Giants Post Game Live, presented by NFL All Day. We'll be right back. Join us Sunday, October 16th for Giants vs. Ravens as the Giants celebrate Latino Heritage Month presented by Ford. Arrive early to partake in several plaza activations including food sampling, salsa dancing, live music, and celebrity artist DJ Camillo performing during pregame warm-ups and select times throughout the game. Limited tickets are available. Visit Giants.com slash tickets to secure your seat today. Welcome back to Giants Post Game Live, presented to you by NFL All Day. The Giants getting a win over the Chicago Bears, 20 to 12. You guys, this week coming into this game, I think a lot of discussion around the Bears are going to run the ball. The Bears are going to run the ball. But in the first quarter, the first half, we saw Justin Fields airing it out. They averaged 78 yards passing a game. They had already 74 in the first quarter uh, but this defense was able to adjust to that how, how, what did you see there they did a great job up front slowing down this rushing game Khalil Herbert had uh, 165 yards last week they had 281 on the ground against Houston and I thought absolutely to your point that was the emphasis can we slow them down I thought that there was a couple of plays in the first half a couple of third and longs that the Giants have been so good on third down, this was a little bit uncharacteristic of them. They gave up a third and 20 on a screen play. They gave up a third and 10 on a scramble for Justin Fields in the first half. I thought they did a better job in the second half of getting them off the field, and that's always the key defensively if you could do that. Stop the run and get off the field on third down. That's your formula for success. Yeah, I mean, Darnell Mooney had a great game to, uh, with some big plays down the field, but Dory Jackson was right there on the, you know, in that big first, the big play early on in the first quarter. It just, you know, he had to be more aware and be aware where the ball's coming out. Uh, and just, he, he was right there in position, though. So I, you can't really fault him for that. He was in good position. Got to play the ball a little bit better, though. Also getting pressure as well. Five sacks in the first yeah. half. That, uh, coming off of Monday Night Football, where they weren't able to get to the quarterback, this team was corrected course and got right in there. Yeah, but sometimes those quarterbacks who, who that scramble around, they're hard to protect, you know, because yeah. they're not in the pocket. They're, they're running around. Making a lot of things happen. Justin Fields is—he is just a—he's just a, he's a, a disturbance back there, trying to get pressure on him because you never know where he's going to be. You never know where the finish line is. So the fact that, you know, we did corral him and allow him and get the five sacks, that was a big part of, part yeah, of the Just, game Justin Fields, he's, uh, I mean, he's too hot to handle, too cold to hold. <laughs> he's one of those guys that you, you want to rush him, you want to get pressure on him, but you want to keep him in the pocket. Yeah. So for the, Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari, that was a challenge all day long. Shout out to Tate Crowder. He had an unbelievable game. He had a huge sack on one of the blitzes. Jalen Smith actually took the lead blocker so he could have the sack and clean up. But how about Dexter Lawrence? On third down, he really filled in for Leonard Williams, who was out today, and he got some pressure. He got a sack. Dexter did a great job pushing that pocket. That's what you want to do with one of the, with a quarterback like Justin Fields who, who loves to scramble and who's very mobile. Push the pocket and push him back into those edge rushers. Right. Dexter Lawrence also two sacks and twice we saw the am I doing it right? The sexy oh, Dexter. Oh boy, there sacks. it is. Yes, <laughs> yes. There it is. Who did no? it better? Wait, you gotta do that. He's gonna leave me hanging on that. Yeah, I mean, the trenches was a great uh, performance for this Giants defense as well. Um, but you mentioned Aziz Ojolari, Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon, 
uh, came to work in a full suit today, ready to make an impact. Aziz had a sack strip and uh, came on recovered the ball, and that was a, a, an important moment for this Giants defense. Absolutely. I mean, it definitely turned down, the, turned the momentum around. They were look, they got into field goal range after that. So it was. You know, those are the types of plays that, that that make this team hard to beat because they come up with these plays at the at the right times. I thought for the Giants today, you mentioned how they took control of this game early on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes as a team, you kind of have to find your way into, like, all right, what kind of team are we? Like, for them, I feel like the Giants, it's unfamiliar territory for them. So it's how are they going to handle the lead? And can they handle whenever Chicago made a good play? They seem to have some sort of an answer for that. So I thought they did a good job of handling the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. And any time momentum swung to the Bears' side, the Giants made a play and found a way to get momentum back on their side. Absolutely. Well, we've got the momentum going, but we're going to take a quick time out. But before we do, the New York Giants' official mobile app is your destination for all things New York Giants. The updated mobile app includes the best Giants highlights, news, videos, photos, and podcasts available for free for Apple and Android phones and tablets. After the break, we'll hear from head coach Brian Dable. That and much more to come here on Giants Post Game Live, presented by NFL All Day. Time now for the HCL Tech Drive of the Game, presented by HCL Tech. Of course, to the drive of the game, we take you to the second quarter. Uh, seven plays, 75 yards, including a 29-yard Saquon run, run, a Tanner Hudson reception, and a Daniel Jones block on De Jaquan Brisker, but of course, ending in an eight-yard Daniel Jones touchdown run, putting the score at 14-6 to six in favor of the New York Giants. That's the scoring drive of the game presented by HTL Tech, supercharging progress, the official digital transformation partner of the New York Giants. Well, that's a mouthful. You know, that's a mouthful. It's not easy to say. You know, I went to Arizona State. Reading is not a priority. Uh, forks up. Those forks up, twisters. you know, it's yeah. a little tongue twister. But welcome back to Giants yeah. Post Game Live presented to you by NFL All Day. We're talking about that drive of the game. That was, you know, again, giving the Giants a sizable lead that they were able to hold on to and, keep, and, and maintain. And there were a couple of moments where we looked at this Bears team on the field and thought, okay, this is the moment they're coming back. But this team really held strong. Absolutely. This is this team that shows resilience over, you know, over this first four games. One thing that you do, the, the one kind of identity that they are showing is the fact that, you know, they're going to keep coming. They're going to keep fighting. They're not going to make too many mistakes. And they're, they're, they remind me a lot of those old Patriots teams where you look at their roster and they're not very impressive, but then you go up and try to play against them and they just are a sticky team. They're just a tough team to beat, a tough team to put away because they make you earn everything. I love that with the legacy uniforms, we went throwback football and it came out <laughs> and it was, hey, we're going to run the football with Saquon and that set everything up, including Daniel Jones. Including Daniel Jones. Now it's time for us to set up head coach Brian Dable, who's at the podium. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Uh, tough game, physical game. Um, that's what we thought it would be. And I thought those Chicago played physical. I thought our guys played physical. Uh, made a few more plays than they did. And uh, there's a lot of uh, bumps and bruises. I don't know the answers to any of the questions relative to any of the players yet. Um, just to, we'll figure that out as we get going. But, um, Tough competitive game. Good to get another win. All right, when uh, Tyrod goes down there, uh, is that you, know, you go with the, the Wildcat and Saquon? Is that something you guys contingency plan that you guys have worked on before? And how seamlessly do you think that worked in that Harry situation? Yeah, those were plays we had in the game plan. I just thought those were the right thing to use at that particular time, based on where Daniel was um, limping around a little bit. And then we put a couple other ones on the sideline, uh, ones that you know. Bobby and I have run in the past. Um, so didn't have to get to, to all of them, but got to a couple of them that I thought helped us, you know, particularly the edge plays, the breeder there at the end. And, uh, you know, Barkley's been ball handling since training camp. Um, not for this necessary, you know, both quarterbacks go down just because it's part of our package that we have and um, just thought that was the best thing to do. Could you have thrown, could you, could you have thrown the ball if you needed need it? Uh, or no? Yeah, I think you could have. Um, I was hoping to get over 40 runs this game. What was that moment like, though, when Tyrod goes down? You've already taken Daniel out of the game. and not all time to discuss that. He, was, he said he was good to go. You said he, like, how does that work? So you're just talking about the communication? How you decided to put him back in, say he's not done for the game? Just 
Yeah, I told him. I, I, I went up to him. I know he talked to the trainers. He worked over there on the side. I saw him moving a little bit. I said, uh, he wanted to go. I said, you're not going in the game. I see you. You're limping. I'm not, I'm not risking you getting injured um, to try to protect yourself with that limp. Um, but if we need you, can you go back in the game? He said, yeah. He said, I can go in the game now. I said, Tyrod's going in the game. If we need you, um, you know, hopefully it'll be just to hand the ball off. And so when Tyrod went down, um, I clicked over to Shea and said, is he good to go? He said, yep. And we didn't pass it, right? We just handed it off. Coach, <coughs> Coach the rushing game obviously is the story. Um, 200 yards. The, the what game? The rushing game. The rushing game, gotcha. Saquon, Daniel. Um, yeah. Can you talk about that, your offensive line and, and yeah. everything that happened to you as far as Saquon was 146, Daniel and all that? Yeah. Um, Good week of practice. Uh, that was, I would say, the plan going into it. It's always good when things work out the way you want them to work out in a game. Um, you know, Daniels weren't necessarily designed runs. There was pass elements to the play that, um, you know, we thought would be a good, you know, few good designs to run against their their team. And they happened to go with the receiver. You know, we hit a couple other ones. You know, we hit the one to Sills where they called us on a formation and. Um, you know, I thought our line did a good job. We ran the ball inside, we ran the ball outside. Had a couple scheme runs in there that we liked this particular week. And then 26 is, uh, you know, I've said it since OTAs, he's a really good football player. So, you know, that along with Daniels, what do you have, about 70 or something around there? Um, you know, that's the way we wanted to play this game. Um, and it worked out. Was that what made those runs by Daniel so effective? Like you said, they went with the receiver instead of staying with him. Or what, what other elements are there? It seemed like the fakes to Saquon also were confusing them. But what, what made Daniel able to get those big runs? Uh, they were open. Yeah, there was nobody out there. So. During the week, because those boots were killing them for certainly the entire first half there. Um, and there just seemed to be a lot of real estate there. Is that yeah, I'd say that's part of the preparation. I mean, it's really no different than a had drop back pass you designed that you think looks good or you know we had a variety of formations that we used a few of them um, you know it's the first time I think we've called really one this year I think we called one other one but for the most part we called a few of them and I just thought it was <clears throat> in our preparation thought it was a good play to use this week right, how encouraging is it to see your team win this game on a day when you face as much adversity as you did what adversity two quarterbacks got hurt Oh, oh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, no, sorry. I don't even think. I mean, look, I just, I, you know, you just move on. I mean, look, you again, you feel for the players um, that get injured. They give everything they have during the week uh, to get their bodies and their minds right. And if, you know, somebody's out, that's why you have other players on the roster that you have confidence and faith in um, or they wouldn't be on the roster. So you have to. Obviously, show empathy to your players that get hurt, but you're on to the you're on to the next play quickly, and you're not you're not worried. I mean, Evan went out. I mean, there's a list. You guys saw it. I mean, there's quite a bit of guys that were out there. Um, I do have the names. I don't have the reasons. Daniel, A. Rob, Mondu, Love, Evan, Gallaudet, Tyrod. So it was quite a bit of them. But I don't think you really think about that when you're going. Um, other than if it's a play call and you need to do something different to either help a particular player or flip a formation or not call a pressure, like you, you got to know your players. You said, you said that you talked to. Who's evaluated for a concussion? Does he have a concussion? Uh, I, I, I have no updates on any player because I did not talk to the doctors or trainers before I came in here. You said you've talked. You as you said, you've talked, you know, since you got here about how good Saquon is. But does the magnitude of what he's done so far surprise you at all? Just, uh, you know, the, the, the level that he's at? The magnitude? Yeah, the, how, how good he is. You, know, you said he was really good. No, I think he's really good. He's a good player for us. Um, I mean, we're on week four. So he's one of our better players. Uh, again, you can use him a bunch. You can use him as a decoy a bunch. Uh, but he's, you know, one of our better players. Um, I think he touched it about 30 times. So, yeah, I don't, I'm not into, I, I understand the question of surprise, not surprise. I just think I watch him at practice. He goes out there, he prepares hard, and then he tries to play as good as he can play. You said that, um, you said that um, this is the way we wanted to play. Um, but some of this at the end was certainly 
emergency situation. I mean, you know, I don't know if you wanted to go into the fourth quarter and not throw a pass for the last 10 minutes. So, I mean, obviously you wanted to run the ball, but, I mean, you just said, you know, what adversity, and you sounded serious that you weren't thinking about that. But Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't see that as adversity. I mean, there's I just... two quarterbacks on the, uh, able to play, and neither of them could play. Yeah. That's well, football. he was out there, and we had other things we needed to do. I mean, that's the job as our of a coaching staff is to make sure you're prepared for whatever situation comes up. Is it always going to be great? No, Paul, it's not. It's you know, certainly things that we can all do better, start with me. But um, I just think that's what you do in a leadership position, too. You don't panic. You try to stay composed. You try to give people a plan that they can go out and execute and believe in when they need to do it, whether that's the quarterbacks, not able to move, so you put them out at receiver and give it to Saquon, who can move, and throw Matt Breida in there. And I'd say just, you know, our smart, tough, dependable theme, you know, smart is at the top of that list. So being able to adjust and handle things as they come our way, whether it's a coaching staff or whether it's the players, that's very important to us. You and Bobby Johnson put in some things? We talked, and then Kafka, you know, had, he's had some things. He's had Tyreek, and he's had other guys. So we just, you know, when that, was, when that went on, Paul, we just sat down, and I said, where's the grease board? I know not many people use grease boards. Five people give me an iPad at the same time. I said, I want a grease board, which is rarely used nowadays. But uh, we talked about a few things. But we had, we had things in the game plan um, that, that you asked about, Mark, that were already in the game plan. So it's just a matter of, hey, let's go to – three back personnel, you know, that they haven't seen all game and, and run one of our plays from our, you know, it's not the wing tee, but the three guys in alignment and, and let's use that. And if it works, let's come back to it. And, you know, you're looking across the field and you know what's coming and Flus is telling them to all get up and bring blood zero. But we felt we had a hat for a hat on, on most of those plays that we had. And then we, uh, we ran another one, um, you know, that Saquon had a read on. And then we, you know, the discussion, what discussion was, do we just, put Saquon back there and forget about the quarterback and put him out. But, you know, that changes some defensive philosophy and mentality, too. So just to try to give yourself a little bit of crease. Not that I can think of. I could be wrong, but not that I could think of. And Dan, Dan who could have thrown it. How did Daniel handle that when you told him that, you know, you were going to go with Tyrod and it didn't yeah. look like he... No, he's, he's, like, like, I, I, he's like, I can go, I can go, I can go. But I just think it's important. You, you can go and do the tests and run over there. And if you're a coach, you're watching them run too, you know. So you appreciate the grit and the resolve that the players have. But I think it's your job too to see if, uh, can you really... I want to make sure you can protect himself more than anything. Can he, can, he, can he? You wouldn't put Daniel back in if you thought he was at serious risk. So, so that said, is it fair to say that you don't think the injury is too serious now moving forward? We, nothing. I don't know. I'll find out, Jordan, when I go back in. But I, but I don't. I honestly don't know. Did you call a press box when we're doing that? I mean, if you want to bring Ronnie in, we can bring him in. You all right, Pat? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> we good? Yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Winning three out of four hasn't been the norm around here for a while. Um, what, in your mind, is the biggest reason this team has responded this way in the first month of the season? I think the players played good when it counted the most. Um, give, give all the credit to the players. I think the assistant coaches and coordinators are, are doing a good job of putting them in position, and, and those guys are playing hard for 60 minutes. So I'd say give, you know, give the players first and foremost all the credit and give the assistant coaches and coordinators the second part of it. Okay. All right. We'll bring uh, Thanks, Daniel, guys. Daniel and Saquon will be in there when they're ready. That's that sound from head coach Co Coach Brian Dable brought to you by Ford. But first, the Giants official connected TV streaming app. Giants TV brings original video content and game highlights on demand and direct to Big Blue fans. Giants TV is free on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV and in the Giants mobile app. After the break, we'll hear from quarterback Daniel Jones, running back Saquon Barkley, and much more. Stay with us on Giants Post Game Live presented by NFL All Day. NFL All Day is the newest way to enjoy the NFL. Collect officially licensed moments featuring top highlights and use them to compete in challenges as you follow the action each week. 
Head to NFLAllDay.com today. Welcome back to Giants Post Game Live, presented to you by NFL All Day. Before the break, we heard from head coach Brian Dable. What adversity, right? What <laughs> adversity. Doesn't matter who goes down. Doesn't matter they lose two quarterbacks in a single game. Saquon Barkley came up clutch, but... One of the things that he talked about is how much he wanted to run the ball going into this game, and he really did. Saquon Barkley, 31 attempts for 146 yards, his 14th 100 or more rushing game, fourth in Giants history for 100-yard rushing games. He was so clutch today. He, I mean, one week, two weeks, and now it seems like he is back to original form. Yeah, you can make an argument right now that Saquon is the best player in the league right now. He came into this game leading the NFL in scrimmage yards, added 162 total yards uh, to that stat again today. And, look, he, he filled in that quarterback, too. Yeah. So, uh, Saquon for president. Uh, if you're a Giants <laughs> fan right now, trade. what can't this guy Saquon, do? Saquon, 2024. Yeah. But I, I feel like, you know, we've been talking all season long about Saquon looks different. He's running different. Mm -hmm. And it's not he's not looking for the, the home run hit. He's mm -hmm. not looking for the knockout ball. He's setting things up with jabs and with counter punches. And there you see, I mean, even on 31 carries, he still averaged 4.7 yards a carry. As a team, we averaged six yards a carry. So that's exactly what you want as your offensive identity. And every run, all of those plays that we saw from Daniel Jones where he bootlegged out and he ran, it was set up because everybody, the defense was they were all sucked in and locked in on Saquon, and that opened everything up on the outside. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying if they can open stuff up for the quarterback to run the ball, they got to open the stu open stuff up for the wide receivers. With only nine uh, receptions for 82 yards, this is great that uh, you know we, we played against the, sh the, the Chicago Bears, a team that struggles to score, but when you play against a team that's going to be able to put points on the board, you're going to need to be more balanced. Saquon is going to have to be less of the, uh, the, the main course and more of like a one of, uh, you know, just a part of the whole entire meal because it's, it's very easy for a good team to take away one player. And Saquon is an outsized effort right now of what this, uh, what this offense is, what this really team is. And, uh, you know, you don't want to rely too heavily on one person. We need somebody in this receiving quarter to really step up. Yeah, Slayton had a chance to today with Galladay going yeah. out. You know, of course, losing Shep last week. You're waiting for one of these guys to step up and make a play. Yeah. And he had it. I, and the sad thing is that we're not talking about what a great throw it was by Daniel Jones on that deep ball to Slayton because he doesn't catch the ball. Yes, we got the pass interference, but that play you have to make right yeah. there. And in the Just NFL, you don't out. get a second chance to make that that play. Absolutely. Well, we saw some some great plays, though, on offense as well, but also on defense. One guy who came ready to work on defense, Kayvon Thibodeau who's speaking in the locker room right now. Happened. Uh, on last play? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm fine. I, I had a little back spasm that I felt, and it was like, yeah, I, I got to get off. You know, I had to call somebody in for me, but yeah. I'm good now. Have you, have you ever been part of a game that had that many injuries? I mean, I mean, that's the resilience. That shows. I, I literally, I think I said it to Dex, and I said, wow, we really had a team. When I saw three running backs in the game, no quarterback, they all went down. It was like they had to come up with the next situation, next package, next, you know, and guys stepped up, and they made plays. It seemed like even before you guys lost, lost uh, Julian and, and Aaron. Julian Love? Yeah. Damn, we lost Jalen. Oh, I didn't even know. Nah, it's it crazy. Early the second quarter, we had a concussion. Again, well, that's a concussion protocol. I don't know what happened. But, yeah. but do you, it, it seemed like even before that, you guys were mixing and matching a lot. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know. I think I think that's that's the greatest part of uh, what we do here at the Giants is just everybody's ready to play, right? There's no guys that think they're not going to play. We all know that it's going to take all of us, and that's what Coach has been harping on, and we kind of just have really just been embodying that. Hey, Kevin, what was the difference in the pass rush today? Um, uh, we were having fun. We we're kind of we're building that chemistry. This is you know our second time really out, and we're still missing a couple guys, but just being able to play free and then the offense uh, playing complimentary football, going down and scoring, and giving us really the opportunity to go you know put some pressure on the quarterback. How slippery is Fields? Oh, he, I mean he's a great player. He's gonna be, he's gonna you know run the league for years to come. I'm you know it was great playing against him, and you know hope to see him in the future. Did you know it was a fumble right away, or was that just heads up in case it's a fumble when you fell? Oh uh, yeah, that's we we I did not know it was a fumble. Because uh, it went forward, usually it's not a fumble, but that's kind of instincts, and that's what we coach is if a ball on the ground, pick it up, and if it's reviewable, they're going to give it to us rather than leaving it there and giving it back to them. So, it was, yeah, it was, it's something we planned. When you said, like you said, you lose two quarterbacks, you have the running back at quarterback. Does the defense say anything like, hey, we're going to have to be the ones to finish this off? Uh, no, nah, it was no flinch. You know, I knew. I told him, I said, well, you're going to put Saquon back there, give it to him, you know, so. Um, I thought it was dope just seeing them back there and, and seeing the confidence in those guys, knowing that, you know, they're going to take over and nobody flinched. Everybody kind of got behind them and, and we kind of got together.
That sound from Kayvon Thibodeau is brought to you by Ford as we take a look at his numbers today, uh, including that one fumble recovery. And guys, one thing that I like that he said is, I, I didn't know it was a fumble at the time of the play. He saw the ball go forward, but you know what? He still made the effort, made the hustle, got on top of it. And that was huge for this, this team, Imani. I used to always hate when the defensive backs would always just try to, you know, there'd be an incomplete pass, and they'd just pick up the ball and run with it. This is a time where it actually, those kind of drills that they do during practice, it, it actually played itself out in, in the positive way so you know, it was something I hated when I played but it's you know I guess this is this is this is why you do the things you do in practice yeah it's great coaching and in practice when you do it and it just happens in the game you know it's almost like breathing you don't even have to think about yeah. it it's an involuntary action uh, great job by Thibodeau following the ball but great job of guys stepping up we talked about the offensive guys stepping up how about Fabian Moreau coming in for Aaron Robinson having a nice pass break up on a big play uh, early on Jalen Smith just activated for the first time this season seven tackles and we already mentioned Dexter Lawrence stepping in uh, he did a great Great job filling in for Leonard Williams. I'm just going to keep doing it. it. Is, I'm just going to keep doing You're it. You're bringing it back. You're going to make it a thing. I can't, I can't a do thing. it as well as Dex can, but you know what? I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. Follow the Giants on social media. Follow on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube for the latest team coverage, breaking news, and content. Stay with us. we got lots more to come here on Giants Post Game Live presented by All Day. We'll be right back. They certainly are. Giants went full legacy today with the throwback uniforms and a halftime show, including Tone Loke, Rob Bass, and Naughty by Nature. Lots of fireworks on the field, but we're going to send it down now to the locker room where running back Saquon Barkley is speaking. Wildcat quarterback, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that we practiced. Uh, I think we did it. We showed it against Carolina. Um, so it was a package that we had in. Uh, but it was pretty, like, I mean, you don't want to be in that situation. But the way that the coaches reacted, brought us all in, started drawing it up, um, felt like, you know, you're back, back in as a little kid in the backyard playing football. Um, but like I said, we had some of those packages already. And we, we worked that in. And we got some really talented backs and a great offensive line. And um, we were able to have a little bit of success on it. Brian said he actually had a grease board out and was I mean, drawing you, it up. Yeah. You were watching him draw it mm -hmm. up? Like it was, I'm like, you were eight years old playing with your friends. Like, uh, on Sunday, getting ready, and you know, you just drawing it up. You, I'm the quarterback, and I draw it up. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it, and go out there. And uh, we got to some of it, but uh, defense stepped up big for us, and um, we were able to get the gritty runs and find a way to get a win. Saquon, how encouraging it is to have a coach that, that can do that on the sideline in, in a situation with so much adversity swirling around? Um, it's not just the, the drawing it up, um, it's every week. The way that uh, we come to work, um, how we adjust. Uh, I, I feel like every week, you know, especially in a run game, like the run that's hitting is not the one that hit the week before, the week prior. Um, it just shows not just how versatile the coaches are, but uh, our players, especially the guys up front. Um, they're doing a great job uh, setting poles. I got to be a little better for them in the beginning of the game uh, when they give me opportunities to, to get on safety. Um, I got to, you know, that's a couple plays taken on my mind, especially the long one. I got to break that and find a way to get in the end zone. But, uh, and the, the, the great thing about it, uh, as we continue to trust each other, uh, we're going to get better um, and just keep leaning on the O-line and keep trusting the system and week by week try to find a way to go 1-0. How did you know you were going in as the quarterback? Like, how did that conversation happen? Uh, when I saw Tyrod go down, I kind of realized, like, oh, I'm up next. I mean, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm the quarterback. So, uh, like I said, it really, I think, First of all, you got to give credit to DJ coming back in the game. Um, you know, that's he's, uh, I can't curse. He's a tough, you know what, you know what I mean? And none but respect for him. And to, to go in there and continue to fight through that for his team just this shows you the type of person, the type of player he is. But um, I, I think, you know, I, I just tried my best to read it. Uh, it's really not that hard, I guess, but I think I made the right reads on him. But uh, like I said, we we're able to. Keep the ball moving, get downfield, get some points, and defense did a great job for us. 
So, so just to be clear, you when you were out there, you were reading your keys as to whether or not to hand the ball off, or you yeah you knew you were carrying or handing off. Yeah, um, I mean, you go out there, you look at a guy. Can't really get too much, but Honestly. you go out there, you look at a guy. Uh, he does this. You do that. If he does this, you do that. And um, I really thought I really thought Breed was about to break it. I, I kind of got caught. And he's special. He's a good back. He's a really good back. And I kind of got caught watching and seeing it because I knew he's gonna get the edge. So I got to do a better job faking faking there. But um, the biggest thing it just shows how gritty this team is. Man, I love love all those guys in the locker room and the way that uh, you know we come in and we fight for each other. And uh, it's early in the year. Obviously, you know, you'd rather be 3-1 and one and 2-2, two and two, but uh, we just got to keep building it, go back, watch film, and get ready for Green Bay and trip to one. What was that sound from running back Saquon Barkley is brought to you by Ford as we take a look at his numbers today against the Bears. 31 rushes for 146 yards on the ground, an average of 4.7 yards per carry. He's got 463 total rushing yards this season. Coming into the game, he was good for second in the NFL. Uh, remains to be seen after today's slate of games how he will be ranked next week. All right, we've got a lot more to come on the show. Stay with us for more Giants postgame live presented to you by NFL All Day, the newest way to enjoy the NFL. We'll be right back. Check out the Coach Dable show presented by Stop and Shop. We'll look back on tonight's game and a look ahead at next week's matchup. It's Coach Dable show airing every week on MSG Networks and on the Giants social media platforms. Welcome back to Giants Post Game Live, presented to you by NFL All Day. Let's send it down to the locker room where Paul Bettino is with Dexter Lawrence. Dexter, a couple of sacks. Giants as a team had five. The pass rush really seemed to come to life today. What was the key behind it? Um, honestly, just rushing as a group, um, you know, get, keeping him in the pocket. He had a lot of yards, um, kind of escaping through the little gaps and things like that. So the plan was just, uh, you know, condense the pocket on him. And, you know, he was holding the ball for us, and we got him. A lot of times with a slippery quarterback, they'll say, don't go all out rush. Kind of hold back because he could escape. Yeah. What was the mentality? Because even though he did run for some yards, again, you guys did contain him. Yeah, I don't think um, – that's, I don't think we should. I mean, I don't think you should rush scared or anything like that. Um, I think you should still rush how you want to rush. Um, just you know, be cognizant of your rush lanes type of thing. So, I mean, that was just the plan. Leonard Williams misses his second straight game. He's such a big, important part of your defensive line. But yet today, you found the pass rush. And also, to be honest, I thought outside of fields running, you contained their running game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes it takes all 11. Um, you know, we did a good week in practice uh, on the short week. Um, you know, just everybody getting 11 heads to the ball. You know, everybody, you know, game tackling. Um, so that was just the plan, just to keep them contained and everybody get to the ball. What went right for you guys in the red zone? They were 0 for 3, just kicking field goals. I thought that was huge. Um, not breaking, bending, but not breaking. Um, you know, we all we preach big, we big on you know play the next down, uh, the next play is our play type of thing, and you know you kind of seen that in the red zone. As a defensive player, are you aware at all that Daniel Jones goes out with a sprained ankle and then Tyrod Taylor gets hit in the head, he goes out, and your offense is running wildcat? No, I honestly didn't notice that until somebody was like, oh, Tyrod's. And I was like, what happened? You know what I mean? But, you know, there's always the next guy up, and Daniel came back and finished the game, and, you know, we won. Three and one now after the first month of the season. you got to feel pretty good about that. No, that feels really yeah. good. <laughs> no doubt. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. That sound from Dexter Lawrence is brought to you by Ford as we take a look at Dex's numbers today against the Bears. Two tackles, three assists, five combined, two sacks, his first career multi-sack game. But I think the most important question is, do you think Paul Dottino can do the sexy Dexy sack dance as well as Dexter, or at least as well as me? <laughs> I think, Paul, I think Paul would need a hip replacement if he tried those moves. Uh, all respect to Paul Latino yeah, and his I'm athletic ability. They do it pretty well. I don't know. You're tough. You're tough to act to follow. You know, we got to we got to get this going for the kids at home. <laughs> but one of the things that stood out too, Dexter Lawrence was talking about that red zone defense. This has been a thing that the Giants' defense has done well, consistently or relatively consistently for the past several weeks. What are you guys seeing when they get down to that red area? That's been an improvement, especially after years past. Well, they're doing a great job stopping the run down the red zone, and, and when you can make a team one-dimensional down the red zone, that helps. Look, the, the Bears, they had the worst passing offense in the league, so you knew they weren't going to come down in the red zone and start slinging it. But I just thought they did a great job swarming, as he mentioned. All 11 hats to the football. 
they didn't just sack Justin Fields today. They had six sacks together, yes, but they had nine quarterback hits. So they harassed him all day long. And even on some of those plays, when you don't get home for a sack, you're hitting him after the throw. You're affecting the pass. Uh, those are a big part of that. And down in the red zone, everything happens so quick. So I, I thought that was a big part of the game. I think one thing you're seeing also is you, it's, they're very assignment sound. It's like in years past, you'd see guys running free in the secondary. Early on in the game, I saw a little confusion at pre-snap. But, you know, they, they go to the sideline, they make adjustments. It's, they're a very sound defense to beat. And if you're not making mistakes, you're very hard to beat. And, and uh, you know, I, I just feel like when you look at this team, it, it, this, is, this is a team that, you know, you're really going to have to execute at a high level consistently, uh, especially in the red zone, to, to get some points on the board. Consistency, toughness, something you want to see from this team. One, thing, one guy we saw a lot of toughness from today was quarterback Daniel Jones. He's speaking at the podium now. I uh, feel good. Feel good. Uh, a little sore, but uh, all good. So, listen to the trainers and doctors, and and go from there. But feeling good. It seemed like the last time you came out, you limp looked looked a little better than earlier on. Did you actually feel better by the end than you did when this first happened? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Once I got out there, I got you know back loose again, and and uh, felt a little better. But like I said, I'm feeling good, and I'll uh, listen to the trainers and doctors, and uh, go from there. How frustrating is that or difficult when you're told you're shut down? Uh, it's frustrating. Obviously, you want to play and you want to be out there uh, with your teammates at the end of a game, you know, where we're fighting and, and uh, trying to win. But, um, you know, I thought guys stepped up and, you know, played great, finished off the game. Considering how much you ran today, um, you were not really able to do that, once you, you know, if you were back, back in the game, were you? Uh, probably not. I think that was part of the decision. Why, why were you so successful early on with those long runs? Why was that, in your mind, why was that there for you? Um, well, I think um, the offensive line did a great job early on in the game. You know, we hit a couple big runs with Saquon, and, and things were opened up, and then uh, we had a couple compliments off it, um, you know, and, and they were obviously playing, playing Saquon, playing the downhill run, and so we had some chances off of it. But, you know, I think hats off to the offensive line. They did a great job control the line of scrimmage all day. That sound from quarterback Daniel Jones brought to you by Ford. Let's take a look at his numbers today. Eight completions, just 13 pass attempts right there for 71 yards. But he did have two, not one, but two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, we need to switch those. Let's I mean, put the rushing yards Yeah, the fact that his passing yards and his rushing yards were nearly equal, that says something. They still got the win. All right, we got one more segment to come on the show. Stay with us here on Giants Post Game Live, presented to you by NFL All Day, the newest way to enjoy the NFL. Giants fans, check out the Eli Manning Show presented by Panini Prism Trading Cards. All you have to do is subscribe to the Giants YouTube channel to catch all of the new shows. It's the Eli Manning Show with a new episode this Saturday, October 8th. And this time, Eli and Sean are headed to London for a very special show uh, ahead of the Giants London game against the Packers. Yeah, we're going international here. We're talking the whole thing. We got leather gloves, cell phones. I might try to get Eli on the tube. Ooh. We're going to have a lot of royalty, maybe watch a little change in the guards who knows you never know what can happen in London. internationally <laughs> known and locally respected right here as we take a look at the standings the Giants three and one on the season but let's see where they pan out in the NFC East shall we right there in the middle uh up and neck and neck with Dallas and uh yeah Long Philly with a big left. come from behind win against Jacksonville Dallas held off uh against Washington and uh there you, I, I mean I love the way it looks right there three and one to them and, of course, a big game next week, Sunday, in London against the Packers. And, you know, one thing that stands out to me is this passing game. After Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers is having a career low in passing. Good. Really a lot of short passage with emphasis on yards after the catch. So how important is tackling for this Giants defense? Oh, tackling is, is going to be a major part of it, especially out there. Usually when we went out there last couple of times, the weather was really bad. So tackling and with uh, with. With the, with the conditions might be a big issue. Yeah, you got to get the right cleats on the pitch. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Jones, uh, not, the, not Aaron Rodgers, will be a big factor. So A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, they got a two-headed monster at running back. This is going to be a totally different quarterback 
and Aaron Rodgers from what they just saw with Justin Fields. So Wink Martindale, he's got a tough task. They'll be out there on Tottenham on the pitch. Yes. Uh, you know, we'll be trying, you know, do our best British accents. Maybe not. Uh, but we'll be here. <laughs> Come hang out with us next week. It's a 9.30 a.m. kickoff in London. Giants, Packers. We will be here, as always, after the game for Giants Post Game Live. For Sean O'Hara and Amani Toomer, I'm Madeline Burke. We'll see you next week. London. Yes. Like the, the curtsy. NFL all day. NFL all day.